Paul Nuttall for EFD is next. Well, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. <clears throat> May I start by uh, wishing everybody a very happy and uh, cold New Year. Um, well, that's the niceties out of the way because it seems that I'm one of the only few MEPs who doesn't seem to foam at the mouth or howl at the moon when we start talking about so-called man-made global warming. Because we're laying policies down here today, or over your period as Commissioner, which will go against science and common sense. Because if you take the globe over the past 100,000 years, which is a sensible period to look at the climate, what you see are massive changes and indeed a global cooling trend. So considering the evidence over the past 100,000 years, do you not think that we're being a tad presumptuous or even egotistical to think that man can alter the climate? Yeah, I think uh, since I was taking care before the responsibility for science and research, I know that uh, never scientists agree about everything. But if we have in one area really an instrument and prevailing view, it's in climate change. We have there uh, in uh, international panel for climate change where approximately 600 top scientists in, on the world are agreeing about that. But to be honest, also some of them uh, are not agreeing with that. But in none of the areas we have such a prevailing view. But uh, my answer uh, to your question would be a bit uh, maybe provocative. If, let's say, that you are right and I'm wrong, or better to say, if, I'm, uh, if you are right and I'm wrong, what would, what would that mean? Are the policies which we are leading still the right ones? Is it still correct that in all the areas we try to do our best that we protect our environment? My answer is clearly yes. So even if it would be, even if it would be wrong while I don't believe that it's so. I think that the policies should be the same. The other question is, if I'm right and you are wrong, and we follow then uh, the advice of this, uh, let's say, some of uh, views which are also, what would be the consequence? I think it's, uh, the answer is pretty clear. It would be pure catastrophe. But uh, I hope that, that we will not need to run in something like that, that we run in, in uh, economic crisis when we started to learn only when the crisis was deep enough. I hope that we are enough politically responsible that we will respond on these issues well in advance. Okay, well, firstly we talk about a consensus. What about the 30,000 30, scientists who signed the Oregon Declaration? But not only that, you know, is it really worth we wrecking the Western economies? Because that's what you'll do by raising green taxes, putting people out of work, based on science, by the way, which is looking more shifty. It's like the half-world dodger. It's as shifty as the half-world dodger, and based on computer models, which are about as realistic as the Wizard of Oz. Is it really worth putting people out of work following dodgy science? Our computer methodology and technology has well advanced. Uh, but uh, but my, uh, what, what I wanted to say to you, it's really, uh, nobody really wants to work against the business. We just want that the business logic would accommodate to something which uh, I think is prevailing view that, that we should enter into a new third uh, industrial revolution of greening, of taking the logic into, of internalizing the cost of environment into account. Seal as that. If we, at the beginning of our logic, internalize the cost of that, what we use, by the way, as consumers, and pay, and we should pay, then I think we are going into a sustainable direction. And that would be uh, my response. Concerning the taxes which you mentioned, don't worry, government will collect their taxes in any way you wish. Uh, and they will always target the level of the taxes. Uh, if they are collecting it from the uh, green sources, I think it's better than from the others. But anyway, 